Kim here with a little bit of resources, and today let's talk about automation with Zapier. We had a question about how to do some of the same automation that we've been doing with Publer, but in Zapier. So we're going to go ahead and look at Zapier, and I have to tell you, I hop in here and use it regularly, and some of the changes they've made have been pretty impressive. And one of the reasons why I had to switch to another software was because they didn't have all the platforms that I needed. They appear to have most, if not all of them now. So I'm going to show you how to do some of the automations that we do in Publer in Zapier. So if you have Zapier, you can use that. So I'm logged in here. I'm on the free plan. And I actually used to use this for LinkedIn for going from RSS to LinkedIn. With LinkedIn though, the problem is that they make you reconnect and reauthorize that connection regularly, like every 90 days or something like that. And I just kind of got tired of doing it especially since I was like maybe doing, I don't know, a post every few weeks. And so I'd be like, ah, who cares? I'll just manually do it. But when you're doing a lot more, you want to, you know, have it automated. So in this particular case, there's some things that have changed that we're going to talk about. But first, let's look at how easy it is to create the connection with Zapier. So right here, they have this new, it's a, they call it beta, but it's the AI. So artificial intelligence is basically you give it instructions and it tries to figure out the connection for you. So in this case, let's go ahead and say that if I have a um, Facebook page update, no, well, just think of this as a if this, then that. So if my Facebook page updates, then create an update on Google My Business. Now, it's not called Google My Business anymore. But I went through the apps in here and that's the connection is Google My Business. That's still Google Business. So you can say create post Google Business see here. So now this one is sync Facebook page updates to Google My Business. That's exactly what I was trying to do. So I'm going to say try it. And there's some things that you have to do in order. So you see that there's little things right here. So you have to fix those. So those are the things you need to do in order to get this to connect. So we've told it we want, if there's a new post in the timeline of Facebook pages, then we want it to post to Google My Business. So right here, you have to sign in to Facebook pages, and then you would need to sign in to Google My Business or Google Business. It's easier to do that if you were already signed into like another tab, and then you can go in and connect that. Now, I'm going to leave this one here for now because that wasn't the question we had. We had it for Instagram and RSS feeds. Let's go back to here. And before we dive into those... I want to show you some of the changes that have taken place. So first of all, if you go to plans, I'm going to show you the plans. They talk about the different levels here. And one of the things, scroll back up here. One of the things that they've changed is that you get unlimited zaps. It used to be like two, right? You still had a hundred tasks, but you only had like two zaps. So in this scenario, let's say that you have something update every day and you want once a day and you want it to post to your Google My Business in this case. Then you could say, okay, once a day, that would be 30 tasks. And where I figured that out from was they, I clicked through a bunch of this and I said, well, how is the usage figured out? And they said, they basically don't, they don't charge you tasks for triggers. Now triggers are what you initiate with. So let's go back here and say, um, the question was Instagram. So, well, all right, let's do RSS first. So if RSS feed updates, then update my Google My Business. Okay, and this is we're using the magic AI. It's just looking against their apps to see what they have, their connections. So here is new item in feed, and it's RSS by Zapier. Now, I remember when RSS by Zapier was only premium. So the fact that it's not premium anymore, that's pretty cool. Then... Um, Google My Business. Google My Business used to not connect, or at least it didn't do it right. Like you could do um, the reviews, but not the posts. That's why I had to go find another solution. So this one does do it now. So now we're going to say try it. And this is what happens. This is called the trigger. So if something happens, so this is, they're looking for it. That's the trigger for it. Then something's going to happen. That's the action. Okay. So what I was talking about here on the usage is that and you can read through this if you want to, but basically what they're saying is that they don't charge for the trigger, but they only charge for when the action happens. So 
how often does it check, right? Now, based on the plans, um, that was probably what I was looking at down here, it will update every 15 minutes. Now, I ran those numbers. So if it's updating every 15 minutes for, an, for one 24-hour period, that would be 96 checks. They're not charging you for that. They're not charging you to check. They're not, you know, so if you have four triggers, they're not charging you for those four, looking 96 times to find those four things. What happens is they charge you when they post that. So every time it posts, those are four tasks. Okay, so that's four tasks. Is it, every time it posts is one, post the second time, two, post the second time, three, etc. You get that. So that is how the tasks work. So if you have an RSS feed, an Instagram account, and a Facebook page, and each one of them updates once a day. So in a 30 day period, you would have 90 tasks then because you'd have 30, 30, and 30. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense on how the tasks work. So I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to show. So we've got, again, we've got this little thing. Does it know which RSS feed until you tell it? So we're going to go into the trigger and this is for specifically for the RSS by Zapier and you can actually edit this, right? So I'm going to say, um, let's see. I'm in, we're going to say Eason Twins, and you know, I need to check if YouTube is a trigger, but I'm going to say YouTube, and we're going to use the RSS feed for that, but I'm going to say uh, RSS, and in here we put the URL, so let me grab that, could have had that open, sorry, RSS, Eason Twins RSS, right here which is actually an XML feed, but it should be the same thing. We're going to see if it works. It'll tell us that. So now I can't see what I'm doing. Um, there's no username required, no password required. See, I have my camera right in front of my face. This is why I had it up there. So it's out of my way. Now I have a whole stack of stuff holding it up. Okay. So now I have to go around that stuff. This is so much more entertaining though. Um, we're just going to leave that. What do I need to do to finish, to continue finish required fields? What is, what am I missing here? Oh, maybe I need to hit tab. Enter text. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. So now it's testing it, right? So it's going to test the trigger and see if there's anything in there. I just clicked. I don't know what happened. I just clicked on the other thing on the app and event and then back and went. So this is right. That is correct. So that's the continuous selected record. So I saw there was details from the last feed item that was in there. So yes, the RSS feed worked. And that's the one that I've talked about in a different video. So then I need to connect my, huh, it says change Google my business. What does that mean? No, I want that. I want, I want that one. So I'm going to say create a post. Oh, and then I need to go into the account. See, this is what happens. You have to look around stuff. So I'm going to say sign in and it's going to sign me in to the one that I want. And then I just make sure that I'm, I'm signed in. It'll look at all my Google business accounts and I need to tell it to see, edit and create and delete, etc. Say continue. But I need to define which one. Okay. So location. So now I get to pick which one it's going to go to. It's going to go to Easton Twins Boutique. Then summary description of the local post summary. Okay. So this is where you get to, I hate looking around this. I'm going to change this back. Okay. So this is where you get to look and say, Hey, this is what it's about. Right? So we're going to put in, not going to put the description is too long. So we're just going to put the title. And so obviously if you're going to do that and that's your whole goal is my goal is Google business. You want to make sure that your summary in this case, when you're entering the title into YouTube, you want to make sure it's keyword optimized for your local searches. So you might want to put like in my case, Sparks, Nevada, right? So I might want to do the Sparks, Nevada. So that way it's localized and helps with that local um, acknowledgement, I guess. Topic type. So this is because you're, you're trying to say the type of topic that is in we're going to say standard and then the action button would be, you can see, look through, this is exactly, if you go through and you're trying to post something into Google business, Google my business, it's Google business. But if you're trying to go in there, then you want to, you'd have buttons. So we're going to say, learn more. 
and then we're going to tell them. So this is nice. This is all Zapier is one of the easiest automation tools to use, but it's not as pretty or as pretty as some of the others. So like my brain can think both ways, but some people will get in here and they just don't, they don't see that it's there, right? So this is taking, if you think of it, like all the details from the trigger point are being put into a chart, right? And it's defining it. So now the next section is going, well, where do I look? And this is what they call mapping, right? So they're like, okay, so you have a title, you have an image, a thumbnail in YouTube's case, you have a description, you have tags, you have a link or a URL. So URL is the link, right? And then over here, they're saying, well, we want these details. So now you have to map the details. So it might be called title here and it might be called headline here. It's not, they're both called title, but let's just say, so you'd have to tell it that those two equal the same thing. So that's what we're doing here is we're mapping it. But Zapier's done most of the work for us. So all we had to do is the little tiny tweaks of what we want where. So in this case, we have the action button to be learn more and we want them to click on it to go somewhere, right? Where in this case, it's the URL to the YouTube video. So we're going to go URL. If I can find it. Oh, link it actually says link in this one. So uh, I go through that whole thing. Anyway, so topic type. Did we not do this? We did that. Okay, we did standard. It's there. Action button is learn more. We did that. And then we did the link. And then the photo source is... Okay, I can't do this with the camera there. Okay, that's better. I'm further away, but... Okay, I can see my screen now. All right, so we're over here. We're fixing our um, YouTube stuff. I did quick check to see... If there was a different connection, there is one specifically for YouTube. So you don't need to use the RSS feed for YouTube if you're using Zapier. Okay. But I'm just showing you this for the RSS. So you will have an RSS. If you have an RSS feed, you'll have information that's like this. So for the thumbnail, the only one I saw was these are height and width. We want the image. So this is the actual image. So we're just going to click that. Again, this is just, you have to find it and, and connect it. And this one's not required, but it's good to have. So we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. And now let's test it. So let's test it. We're going to say test the step. And it says it's sending a post to Google My Business, and which is Google Business. Let's go to, well, let's go to... It might take time to show up though. And this is our new one. This is the one my sister and I have that's new. So I think it sent that one right there because I haven't sent one yet. So there it is right there. It worked pretty quick too. All right. So we've done that and we can say publish. I actually do want this. So I'm going to leave that there. All right. So that zap is in place. Now we can come back to where it has this back arrow right here and we can see that we have, let me refresh this. We have two now, right? We have the one I didn't finish. It's not on. This one is on and that is the one that I did finish. So that was RSS to Google my business. Okay. Now we're going to create another one and we're going to specifically do Instagram. See, look on a different page still has that AI option and I can say, um, when Instagram updates, then send a post to Google my business. That's not really what I want, but it'll, it should figure it out. It says hang tight. So this one, they have a trigger here. That's new media posted in my account, Instagram, and then create post and Google my business. I'm going to say, add all steps to zap. Okay. So now they're both here. And again, we do the same thing. And we click on this one and we say we need to sign into Instagram. And I don't know if I can sign in. You want to be signed into the right one. I'm not signed into the right one. But I'm not going to activate this one, right? So I'm going, so that one's done. We can test it to make sure this is the very wrong Instagram account. So I do not want to do this one. So this one, it took, it has a, particular image, which is not showing us. So we won't really know what it is. I just happen to know 
I'm in the wrong account, so I know what it what that image is going to be. And they have three here that you can look at. And if it's like you're like, hey, there's another one that should be there, you can say find new records and see if it shows up. Sometimes the feeds take a while to update. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. That's just the way the connections are. It's based on servers. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in the background you have no control over. So if you can't find it here, but this still looks like stuff from the feed, it's probably a good connection. So we're gonna say continue with selected record. Then it has Google My Business. I have the my account already attached. So it's gonna create a post, but I'm gonna tell it a different account. No, I am gonna tell it. Different location, I'm gonna tell it a different location. So let's say I wanna put that onto Little Biz Resources. I don't know if that's the right one, I have two. And then the summary, you would go through the exact same steps. So you'd say summary and we'd say, okay, um, I want the text to be unique. One thing with Google My Business that you cannot do, which is why part of the reason why I use Publer is that I can use spin tax in Publer so I can keep either, if I need the same image, I can repeat it, but it changes the wording, but it keeps the similar meaning. Now what happens is if you, let's say you use the same caption every single time, then you're going to have a tough time doing this. So you want to make sure that if you're doing Instagram to Google My Business, that your caption is unique on every single image. You don't want to use the same wording. Okay, so we're going to say caption because that's going to be the summary. And and now I know I'm doing that. So now in my captions, I can make sure that the captions are appropriate to also be shared onto Google Business, right? And then the topic type, again, is going to be standard. Wait a second, right? And then we're going to do learn more and then this one it depends on what you're doing so i would argue that if you're going from instagram to google my business you may not want them to go back to instagram so if you want them to go back to instagram then you can just put the post right here this permalink that's that's permalink is link or url or however you want to say that. So you can say, you can choose permalink if you want them to go back to Instagram. If you're building your Instagram, that's a good strategy. If you're not building your Instagram and your goal is to get them to go somewhere else, then let's see if there's an option to just type it in. Enter text or insert data. So let's just see. Let's see if it'll let me do that. So it does let you type it in. So we're going to say continue on this one and then I'm not going to test it because I don't want to post that to that particular account, but this, there's no photo in this particular case because I, I didn't, didn't set it, but I should have for Instagram. Let's go back and set that. So this is going to be the media URL and then This is the photo source URL. So I'm actually gonna copy that and we're gonna put it in here and see what comes up. That's the image. That's why I don't wanna post it. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome, but I don't wanna post it there. So yeah, so now I know that the image is there and that's what you need to do, right? Action button URL, and then that's the media URL is that, that one we picked. That was media URL, that's what we picked. No, not both. Okay, so then we would say continue, and then we would say, you know, we were, we're going to skip the test, and then we would either publish it or not. So that is how easy it is to connect things. I mean, these are they're super simple. So that is about it for Zapier. It's super easy to use. You have to go in there and play with it. Let me know if you need me to do another video. This is pretty straightforward for the most part. If you have additional questions, just pop them into the comments or you can hop into the Facebook group and ask questions there. You can tag me. And in the next video, we will jump back to Publer and look at specifically Facebook and how to create recurring and automated posts for that.